Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, and today we need to have a talk about Bill. Bill has been accused of rape and sexual harassment multiple times by multiple women in allegations stretching back decades. He's even had to settle one of these accusations out of court with one of the victims. And yet, throughout this entire process, even though much of this has been in the public record for decades, he has been able to continue his career with seeming impunity, collecting millions, as well as the adoration of his adoring fans. The strangest part about this story is that you have almost certainly never heard of it because I am not talking about Bill Cosby. I'm talking about Bill Clinton. Yes, Bill Clinton, former president of the United States, multiply accused rapist. This, These allegations go back decades. And we don't have time to go through all of them, but let's just highlight a few of them. And everything I'm talking about in this video is uh, cited with documents that you can find for yourself. They will be in the show notes for this video. Please check the video description. So let's just look at a few of these cases. Stretching back to Bill's college days in Oxford in 1969 as a Rhodes Scholar, where he allegedly raped 19-year-old Eileen Wellstone after meeting her at a pub. A retired State Department employee later anonymously told Capitol Hill Blue in 1999, There was no doubt in my mind that this young woman had suffered severe emotional trauma, but we were under tremendous pressure to avoid the embarrassment of having a Rhodes Scholar charged with rape. 1972, a 22-year-old woman told campus police at Yale University that she was sexually assaulted by Clinton, a law student at the college at that time. The woman did confirm the story to Capitol Hill Blue when she was tracked down for comment years later. 1974, at the University of Arkansas, where Bill Clinton was then a law school instructor, a woman claimed that uh, Bill tried to prevent her from leaving his office during a conference. She said he groped her and forced his hand inside her blouse. She complained to her faculty advisor who confronted Clinton, but Clinton claimed the student came on to him. And she left the, the school shortly thereafter. She confirmed the story, as, as well as several former students at the university confirmed this story, but no punitive action came of it. In 1978, there was Juanita Broderick, who was a gubernatorial campaign election volunteer for Bill Clinton, and she had this to say. Whatever. Then what happens? Then he tries to kiss me again. And the second time he tries to kiss me, he starts biting on my lip. a minute. He starts to uh, bite on my top lip and I try to pull away from him. And then he forces me down on the bed. And I just was very frightened. And I tried to get away from him and I told him no. I didn't want this to happen. But you wouldn't listen to me. Moving to the 1990s, we have Paula Jones, who on May 8th, 1991, was lured to Clinton's Excelsior Hotel room during a conference when he was governor of Arkansas and she was a state clerk. During that brief encounter, she said he touched her, tried to kiss her, and dropped his pants and asked for oral sex. Clinton has denied that steadfastly, maintaining he did not have relations with, I mean, he does not even remember meeting her. Of course, he did end up settling that lawsuit to the tune of $850,000 to drop the sexual harassment charges. Again, this list is voluminous, and it goes on and on. Please read through some of these cases for yourself. Carolyn Moffat, Elizabeth Ward, uh, Sandra Allen James, Christy Zercher, Kathleen Willey, a White House volunteer, reported that Clinton grabbed her, fondled her breast, and pressed her hand against his genitals during an Oval Office meeting in November 1992. Three. These accusations continue to emerge over the years. They have been attested to by multiple women. The question, exactly in the cause, as in the Cosby case, is why did this never come to light before? Why is it being covered up? And the answer is that unlike in the Bill Cosby case, case Bill Clinton has something that Cosby doesn't. Political power. 
Clinton's former chief of staff admitted she had been hired to conduct media smear campaigns against anyone planning to tell the truth about the governor's sexual habits. She was prepared to go after at least 26 women who had the potential of destroying Clinton's chance at the presidency. Of course, there are many dirty tricks like this that have been alleged as well uh, as well as the rape accusations, and they get even dirtier when you look into the very real threat of death that a lot of these women faced, including people like Kathleen Willey, who have talked about the various dirty tricks that were played on them throughout the time when they were uh, trying to proceed uh, with accusations against Bill Clinton. But the question nonetheless is there if all of this is there and if we are told over and over again in the bill cosby case that questioning the women is victim blaming and that we should not engage in that practice how come the very same people who tell us that in the bill cosby case are the people who say well every single one of these allegations against bill clinton is politically motivated and thus we shouldn't listen to these women. Keep in mind, these are the exact same people who likely will vote for Hillary Clinton if and when she runs 2016, because she'll be a woman president, who are standing up for this multiply accused rapist by denouncing his victims. And the strangest thing is, when someone comes forward, even with very, very, very tame criticism, trying to broach this subject. You no, know, it concerns me. I mean, the thing is, is that I think workplace violence is a serious thing. Think about your network. If the president of your network had relations with a 20-year-old girl who was there on, from college, I think the president of your network would be fired. We don't accept that in the workplace. And so if that's what Bill Clinton, you know, did multiple times, really, they ought to be concerned about you know, being associated with him. That is extremely tame criticism. And you'll note that Rand Paul is only referring to the consensual charges against Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky and others there, not even the rape allegations. And yet, of course, the real liberal politics types websites will say he hits rock bottom by accusing Bill Clinton of sexual violence towards women. Yes, because... Even bringing this issue up is political rock bottom to people who are so brainwashed by the left-right paradigm that any accusation against their, their idols must be dismissed out of hand as pure craziness. I'm obviously not talking to my regular viewers now. I'm talking to people who have been sent this link or have found this link on YouTube. Please snap out of your conditioning and take a look at the two cases of Bill Cosby and Bill Clinton and tell me how they are different and why they should be treated any different. Of course... The other question is, why did the dam break for Bill Cosby? And of course it wasn't because the establishment media that had known about and had largely ignored these allegations for years and years and years suddenly decided that it was an issue. No, it was Hannibal Buress getting on stage saying, Google Bill Cosby rape and going viral with that that suddenly it became a meme. And now when you Google Bill Cosby rape, you will see no end to the various permutations of the memes trying to bring this these accusations to your attention. Can you imagine if we did a similar thing with Bill Clinton rape? Now, I would never tell people to actually use NSA adjunct privacy invading Google for any of their searching. I would say startpage.com and search for Bill Clinton rape. But you get the idea. Just do it. Search Bill Clinton rape. Make this go viral. We need to get Bill Clinton out of politics for good. Not only, and of course this is a good enough reason in and of itself, because of his sexual violence towards women and his multiple rape allegations, but also for all of the other uh, skeletons in his closet. For more on that, you can see the previous edition of my podcast, Meet the Clintons, or you can see this week at weekend's editorial in the International Forecaster, where I write about why Hillary Clinton must not become president. Again, there is an establishment that does try to cover up the sins of those in power. This is not a, a difficult thing to understand, and it is something that if the dam is broken with Cosby, how come it's never broken with Clinton? Well, it's up to us to do it. Google Bill Clinton rape.